I'm going to show you how to calculate the binding energy of an atom, um, or of a nucleus, really. Uh, this is actually a pretty simple calculation. I think it's hard to wrap your mind around what it means. Okay, Binding energy is not energy you have. It's something that's, that's uh, related to the stability. Okay, It is the energy you need to take an atom apart into all its pieces. It would be the work you needed to do to take it apart. So basically, the more binding energy you have, the more stability you have. The more work you have to do to take it apart, the stabler the atom is. Okay. Now, um, behind all this thing is Einstein's energy-mass relationship. Okay, Energy equals mc squared. But this means is that something that has more energy has more mass. If I take a book and I take it from the floor and I put it up on a shelf, it's got more mass up on the shelf. Now, it's, you know, for that book, it's almost immeasurably more, right? Um, it's a tiny, tiny amount, but it does have more mass. A baseball that's moving has more mass than a baseball that's sitting still. Um, and that's, that's what we're going to do here. Is we're going to look at the mass of an atom in all of its pieces and compare it to the mass that it has when it's all together. And when it's all in pieces, it'll have more mass than when it's together. And that's because we would have to do work take it apart. Okay, I'll show you this. This is actually a fairly simple thing. So let me introduce to you the, the concept of unified mass units. Uh, one U is equal to uh, one twelfth of a carbon uh, 12 atom, ordinary carbon, the most abundant type of carbon. If you divide it into 12 equal parts, that's what a unified mass unit is. That's how it's defined. So this is the one atomic mass you never have to look up. There it is. It's 12 exactly. It defines It defines what a mass unit is. Okay. Um, the next thing is uh, that a U, if you wanted to convert it into um, kilograms, that's how many kilograms it would be. If you turned it into pure energy, okay, that's how many MeV it'll be. So this is actually one of the key numbers that we're going to use. One U turned, you know, by Einstein's relationship here, right? If you turn one U into uh, pure energy, that's what you get, right? And we can actually do that calculation, right? It's uh, 1.6605 E minus 27. And then I'm going to use a more accurate version of the speed of light, 2.998 E8 squared. And then to turn it into um, electron volts, 1.602 E minus 19. I'm dividing. This would be joules, of course, right? I'm going to divide by that. And if I do that in my calculator, 1.6605 E minus 27 times 2.998 E8 squared divided by 1.602 E uh, minus 19. I actually get something that's very close. It's like 931.6 MeV or something. Obviously, we'd have to use a, a less rounded value of this or this or something like that, right? But but that's the notion. If you take this and turn it into pure energy, that's how much energy you would get, okay? And then uh, we're not going to use this too much, but there's the mass of an electron in use, a free electron. Um, there's the mass of a proton. We're not going to use that so much, but these guys are what we do, okay? We're going to take an atom apart into hydrogen and... Neutrons. So, for example, a, a carbon-12 atom, right, has six protons, six neutrons, right? We're going to turn that into six hydrogens and six neutrons, six free neutrons, right? And if you think about it, that's this has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. Over here we have six protons and six electrons, and here we have six neutrons. It's arbitrary. It's arbitrary. I mean, how we do binding energy, but that's what we do. Okay, let me show you an example calculation. These really are not all that hard to do. Okay, so let's find uh, the binding energy of carbon-14. Okay, step one, look up the mass of the neutral atom. This is the neutral atom mass. Those are in your Appendix B of your book. Or you can look at that online website, right? And then the next thing to do is to take it apart. Take carbon-14 apart. Well, we know that carbon-14 has six protons, so we're going to take it apart into six hydrogen atoms, 
And then we know that it has eight neutrons, right? Because 14 minus six is eight, right? Okay, so six times, and then we need the mass of the uh, neutral atom of hydrogen, right? So we go six times 1.007825, right? And we're gonna find the mass of it taken all apart, 1.008665. Right, add that all up. Okay, so I take my calculator. Six times one point zero zero seven eight two five plus eight times one point zero zero eight six six five. And don't be rounding. There's no sense that we're rounding to some arbitrary number of sigfigs. And I get fourteen point one one six two seven. So one two three four five six one two three four five. There's another zero there. Okay. Okay, um, now if you take a look at the, the neutral atom mass here, the neutral atom has less mass. Now, you are thinking to yourself, mass is conserved. How could you have the parts of something have more mass than the whole? <clears throat> and the answer to that is that, that uh, energy and mass are conserved. And if you took it apart into this, you would have to do work. Okay, you have to do work. Work has mass. Just the act of pulling that apart would give these things more energy. Giving them more energy gives them more mass because of E equals mc squared. Okay, so yeah, there we go. We'd have to do work to do that. Therefore, it gets heavier. It's more massive too, right? Heavy, I guess, is relative to the gravity. Huh? And then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract this, <clears throat> find the mass difference. Okay, so subtract uh, 14 uh, point zero zero three two four two, and I get point one one three zero two eight, right? One one three zero two eight, and then <clears throat> to figure out how much energy it is, we use this conversion factor here. This converts the U into pure energy, right? So 931.5, I'm multiplying by that, right? So times 931.5, and I get 105.28, I'm gonna say 105.3 MeV. Da -da. Okay, and now we're done. This is the binding energy right there, right? Again, that's the energy needed to take it apart the bigger that is, the more stable the nucleus is, okay? Now, what I'm about to show you is not something you generally do, but if you wanted to compare carbon-14 to some other atom or some other nucleus, right, okay, here's what you'd do is you'd, you'd say, okay, there's 14 total nuclei here. So per nucleon, per nucleon, that's 105.3 per 14 nucleons, right? So I'm gonna divide by 14. And that's about 7.520 MeV per nucleon. This is not generally what you do, but if you wanted to compare this to some other atom, this is how you do it. Because in general, large nuclei, even though they're not stable, have bigger binding energies than small nuclei, okay? So this is the calculation. Right. In general, what you do step by step is you take it apart into hydrogens and, and neutrons, add the masses together, subtract the neutral atom mass, multiply the difference by 931.5. Okay. Right. So in general, look it up. You got to look up the neutral atom mass. Here's where your IQ is on the line. You got to figure out how many hydrogens and how many neutrons to break it up into. Right. Subtract the neutral atom mass from the taken apart mass then multiply by 931.5. This is going to be, by the way, the, the mantra, our mantra. We're going to multiply a lot of mass differences by 931.5. There you go. Not so bad, is it? Here, got a little smiley face on it.